WFTV Orlando. Live from Channel 9, Central Florida's news leader, Bob Opsall, Marla Weech, Danny Trainer's weather, and Pat Clark with sports. This is Eyewitness News Tonight. Good evening. Our top story tonight. Orlando police have stepped up patrols around Lake Adair after an early morning attack on a female jogger. The woman says a man tried to sexually assault her. And tonight, the people who live around that lake are stunned and frightened. Channel 9's Kathy Bellich joins us now live from Lake Adair with the story. Kathy? Bob and Marla, it's unusually quiet here tonight, possibly because a 32-year-old woman says she was attacked here on the south end of Lake Adair. It happened just before 6 o'clock in the morning yesterday. It was still dark, just about as dark as it is right now. She says the man came up from behind. They struggled. She tried to use mace on him, but he wrestled it away. And this attack has the people who usually enjoy this lake a little nervous tonight. The Welchels were just about the only people we ran into at Lake Adair. They say it's unusual for them to have the lake to themselves during their nightly walk. I wasn't nervous. I'd heard the news report, but I was concerned when I haven't seen a soul. I don't know if they're home cooking turkeys or what the problem is, but nobody's out tonight. I can't imagine it happening here. It's such a good neighborhood, a safe neighborhood. Uh, it's, it's very much a surprise. Police won't even tell us everything they're doing to catch this man. The suspect is described as being 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing 180 pounds, and as having a dark complexion. We have committed a tremendous amount of assets to that area like we would in any area when a serious violent crime occurs because I'm the last thing a victim or their family should be living are the memories of a tragic event like this, especially so soon before Thanksgiving. Until they do catch him, police have some advice for walkers and joggers, particularly women. If you're going out after dark, don't go alone and don't count on mace to protect you. Don't count on it working 100% of the time. If you have it, carry it. If you need it, use it but don't count on it all the time. And police are asking anyone who may know anything about this attack to call them. Reporting live in Orlando, Kathy Bellage, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Kathy. A gruesome discovery in Miami today. A homeless man who came across a cardboard box on a side street found a woman's body inside. Lawmen say the woman had a cord wrapped around her neck and her head was covered with a plastic bag. Neighbors say the street is often used by the homeless, but so far no one has identified the woman. Poli excuse me. Police in Claremont believe they've stopped a rash of convenience store robberies. They've arrested three men for holding up a Cumberland Farm store. The clerk refused to hand over any money and called police when the suspects ran. Investigators believe they're the same men who held up more than a dozen other stores in the past few weeks. Seminole County lawmen want to talk to anybody who's purchased charity raffle tickets from a man named Peter Weed. The tickets promise big prizes and say donations go to two different cancer organizations, but police say the tickets are phony. Weed told an eyewitness news reporter today the whole thing is just a misunderstanding. He says he's in the process of returning the money he's collected. Well, there's a lot of talk tonight about the latest revelation in the Kimberly Mays baby swap case. A former nurse's aide claims she was ordered to switch Kimberly and another baby with a heart defect in the late 70s at Hardy Memorial Hospital. She says she refused, so someone else made the switch. An attorney for the teenager says this is not welcome news for Kimberly. I, th I think that the general feeling in the family is that it's just unfortunate that this thing continues to be, continues to be pursued. It is so fruitless from Kimberly's standpoint. She just wants to be left alone and she just wants to be a happy young woman. He also says the story is hard for him to believe. At the same time, an attorney for Kimberly's natural parents is calling for a criminal investigation. Another teenager is just thankful to be alive this holiday season. 17-year-old Philip Chandler wasn't expected to survive being locked in the hot trunk of his car for hours, but he did, and he is making a miraculous recovery. Tomorrow night on Thanksgiving, watch our Eyewitness News special called Philip Chandler's Miracle. It's at 9 o'clock right here on Channel 9. An Orange County elementary school student got a school bus ride he wasn't expecting this morning. Just as he climbed aboard a school bus, the bus was hit by a pickup truck. It happened on State Road 535 near Highway 50. Amazingly, he was not injured and there were no other students aboard the bus yet. The truck driver was treated and released from the hospital. Lawmen say he will face charges. 
Congestion is the word on Central Florida's highways tonight, this night before Thanksgiving. It's one of the busiest traveling days of the year. Channel 9's Mike Maycheck is standing by live along State Road 520 in Brevard County. A busy 520 tonight, Mike. Marla and Bob standing by in the rain. It is a soupy mess out here, and that's causing nothing but problems for motorists. You've got roadways out there that are wet, that are slippery, very dangerous, and the result has been a lot of accidents. Another hectic holiday evening for highway troopers. Officer Todd Leroy tries to keep pace with what seems like a nonstop night of accidents. Generally, they have been fender benders. We, I've had one that, that involved personal injury, but most of them have been uh, basically minor and uh, easily avoided, too. He says it appears most drivers are putting speed before safety. There seems to be a sense of urgency about the people they've got somewhere they've got to be. Heavier traffic on the highways means more motorists stopping at interstate rest areas, where armed security guards are keeping an eye on things. Ever since the murder of a British tourist at a rest area near Tallahassee in September, most motorists say they like the show of force. I'm, I'm still cautious, but it's, you know, comforting to see the security guard walking back and forth. Nice to know that there's a security guard around, you know, in case anything does happen, especially at night. And during the frenzied pace of holiday driving, most motorists can use a little roadside peace of mind. Since 3 o'clock this afternoon, the troopers here in Brevard County that they say they have responded to about 30 accidents. The wet roadways are causing most of those accidents. Their advice tonight, their advice like all the time, is just slow down and be careful out there. We are live in Brevard County. I'm Mike Maychak, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Always some good advice. Thank you, Mike. Well, if you're waiting till morning to drive to your holiday destination, you'll want to get an early start. The worst bottleneck, as we understand, is expected at the intersection of the Florida Turnpike and I-75. That's just south of Ocala. You'll also probably run into heavy traffic on I-75 as you head north towards Gainesville and on I-4 as it merges with I-95. The best advice, take your time and be patient. Well, some folks waited till the last minute to begin planning their Thanksgiving meal. Grocery stores all over Central Florida were packed with shoppers taking their chances to find that perfect turkey. Most stores will be closed tomorrow for the holiday, so all those busy folks spent the evening fighting for the last bags of stuffing and waiting in long checkout lines. And you have to have a kettle this time of the year or else it just wouldn't be a proper holiday. Orlando Mayor Glenda Hood officially kicked off the Salvation Army's Red Kettle fundraiser this afternoon. The spare change dropped into the kettle stays right here in Central Florida to help some 250,000 people. And that number includes the 12,000 children who count on the Salvation Army for Christmas toys. That and the clouds kind of get you in the holiday spirit. That's too. right, yeah. every year. The River Phoenix family speaks out about recent revelations in his death. We'll have their explanation of his drug overdose coming up. What should happen to Orlando's Naval Training Center once it's closed? We'll hear some suggestions next. And you tell us if you think a lawsuit could help to keep the base open. The results of our exclusive phone poll when we come back. It's the 1994 Pontiac New Car Showing, featuring better value than any other car line in the world. The 1994 Pontiac Grand Am, with anti-lock brakes and driver's side airbag, it offers the sporty looks, handling, and safety of high-priced imports for thousands less. Now just $199 a month. $199 a month. And don't miss the world's best of show, the totally redesigned 94 Pontiac Firebird. World-class engineering and performance at an affordable price. Pontiac's 94 New Car Showing, happening now at your nearest Central Florida Pontiac dealer. Don't miss it. All for you. Save on Rockport during our shoe spectacular at Belk. You can see it in everything we do. Brazilian and lightweight, Rockport cradles your foot for comfort. All for you. And for a limited time, they're 20% off. Quality and savings that are truly spectacular. This Just when you thought it was safe to go back to Universal.
face, the old you, all on Attack of Jaws. Catch him live at Universal Studios Florida. Now, kids ride Jaws' incredible wave of action and adventure free. Spellbound perfume from Estee Lauder. Now choose any Estee Lauder fragrance and receive this 33-piece collection, including an interchangeable compact disc eyeshadow case. The coloring box, worth $150, is yours for $32.50. Estee Lauder's special holiday offer is yours at Gaffer's. Like dozens of other military communities across the United States, Orlando is dealing with a monumental task, figuring out what to do with the Naval Training Center once it's closed. Replacing the area's third largest employer will not be easy. Tonight, Channel 9's Jane Wattrell joins us again to continue her look into the future of the Orlando Naval Training Center. Jane? Well, Bob and Marlo, there are a few success stories out there, but taking over a base and bringing in jobs takes years. Judging by other communities' experiences, Orlando is in for headaches and frustrations, and it will take strong leadership to replace empty buildings with jobs. Seven million square feet. That's how much building space will be left at the NTC when the Navy moves out. It's staggering, perhaps even more so when you consider there's 7 million square feet of office space in all of downtown Orlando. With so many buildings, so much land, there are plenty of ideas for tenants at the NTC. It would be a great college campus. I think medical would be the main thing for a lot of the retirees. A boot camp may be a possibility. As Orlando's base reuse commission ponders the future, 1,400 miles away, a small Midwestern community is successfully filling its abandoned base. Two years ago, Wurtsmouth Air Force Base in Oscoda, Michigan was ordered shut down. Every job in this town of 2,400 was connected to the base. A reuse commission quickly kicked into gear, and two companies have moved into Wurtsmouth with hundreds of jobs. But its biggest roadblock was the federal government, taking six months to process a lease. Somehow you've got to grasp what you want the base to be used for, what you see the highest and best use of the base to be, uh, and then proceed on with that plan. In Orlando, Mayor Glenda Hood's plan involves community input and committees. We have 10 very active committees uh, meeting, uh, starting to look at their vision for the future. We've kept our committees rather small, between 12 and 15 individuals on each of those committees. And I think it's great to have a committee, but, uh, you know, if you want to get something not done, just have committees. Former Congressman Lou Fry converted the old McCoy Air Force Base into part of Orlando International Airport. He's critical of involving too many people in the reuse process. So I think what we need is a focus and that's really at the present time what's lacking. There is uh, always the chance when you uh, create a reuse organization so big and so broad so as to take uh, every possible sector of the community's uh, ideas into account that you start losing control. Uh, you really never develop any control. But Mayor Hood is adamant, the more input the better. The reuse ideas will come from committees and people. We want to make sure that everyone is participating in the process, that everyone has a say in uh, what those uses are going to be. Next up for the Reuse Commission, we'll be hiring a consultant to help attract future tenants to the Navy base. And now for some unfinished business. Last night we asked you to call in and tell us what you thought about the possibility of a lawsuit to fight the NTC closure. Well, the results are overwhelming. 3,332 people voted in favor of starting a lawsuit. Only 128 voted against the idea. And Bob and Marla will be passing along these results to Congressman Bill McCullum, but to let you know that he cannot file the lawsuit himself since he's an elected official. It will have to come from citizens in the community. But as you can see from the poll, it seems like there's a lot of people interested in this lawsuit. So are you saying another committee needs to be formed to spearhead <laughs> this effort? Or is everybody going to be going... 
I don't know. I guess uh, we will know in December. Congressman McCollum will be making a decision by then, and of course we will have uh, the latest on it on Eyewitness News. We'll continue to follow this story. But bottom line, this may need to be a grassroots yes, effort. Yes, it will definitely need to be a grassroots effort. It'll have to come from citizens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Jane. Well, after years of winding its way through Congress, the Brady Bill is on its way now to the President's desk. Senate leaders worked out a compromise today that will allow opponents of the Brady Bill to propose some changes in a separate bill in January. As it stands, the measure requires a five-day waiting period for handgun purchases. It's named after James Brady, who was badly wounded in the assassination attempt on President Reagan 12 years ago. It's been gloomy and chilly so far this week. Is Turkey, get, turkey Day going to turn out to be a turkey? Danny Trainer steps in with the holiday AccuWeather forecast coming up. I think he's dressing right now. Oh, That's really? Nice. <laughs> and here's a real non-traditional Thanksgiving dinner. Most of us humans prefer to eat off our plates. <laughs> we'll explain what this is all about in just a moment. Stay with us. Henry, did you know you can go into any service merchandise nationwide, use their gift registry, and find out exactly what I want as a gift? Huh? No, Henry, use the gift registry. A better way to shop, a better way to save. The Roundabout Chef Skillet from Daisy. 1,200 watts of power to let you cook almost anything. And the nonstick cooking surface pops out for easy cleaning. The Roundabout Chef Skillet, on sale for just $34.94 at service merchandise. Call for the store nearest you. Oh, hi! The holidays are such a special time. Belt stander for the wife. Around here, we like getting all bundled up and going to Builder Square. Saving on gifts, trees, trimming, lights, everything to make the holidays more festive. Even industrial sized eggnog mixers. Oh, 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 oh. An unsuspecting victim waiting for a business to open here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bob from FBL. I was wondering, when you're in a nightclub, do any of those flashing lights confuse you at all? All the time. They do me as well. Well, you know, sea turtles are confused by beach lighting. If they see it, they walk toward it, and they go the wrong way. They end up becoming dinner, dinner for a seagull. So we want to help them out, give them a fair chance. Just call us at 1-800-DIAL-FPL. We can tell you what you can do to help, and we'll also send you a free sea turtle bumper sticker. Well, that's great. Oh, well, thank you. Before you buy a new car, consider the comfort, consider the quiet, consider the power, consider the fit and the finish. But most importantly, before you buy a new car, consider these options. The Chevy S-Series, so new from the inside out, everything else is history. Thousands of gift items, savings of 50 to 70 percent. The Ross After Thanksgiving Sale, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Opens 8 a.m. Friday. Don't be late. If you heard about the rough surf along Volusia County's coast uh, in the last day or so, it was nothing compared to the violent storm that five boaters endured near the Bahamas. The South African sailboats sank, forcing them to jump into a raft and live on nothing but small food wafers for more than a week. Finally, after a passing freighter rescued them, they are giving thanks that their ordeal ended happily. Oof. You know, there are many words I can think of to describe this day, and a lot of them I can't use on TV. <laughs> oh, yeah? But it looks as though, uh, and, and the question is, will it persist? Yes, I mm -hmm. think so. I think tomorrow looks just as disappointing as I think today was. I miss the sun. There's Man. a good chance now, I want you to understand this, this may last until Monday. Oh, the storm great. is just sitting there, churning around the Bahamas, not moving any. If it is moving, it's moving so slowly we can't perceive it. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's around, we have a chance to be pretty overcast. So settle in, enjoy the company of your family. Okay. All right, That's let's easy. begin with what happened today. And these are uh, the statistics that will go in the record book for today. We had some uh, people report some rainfall. Uh, Don Dunsmore in Rockledge, almost uh, a half an inch of rain. And Joyce Barton in Deltona reported two tenths of an inch of rain. But as you can see, our... Regular reporting stations had less than about a tenth of an inch of rain. Everybody stayed generally around the 70 to 71 to 73 to 69 mark for today. Let's talk about what's going on now. Here's the radar in time lapses. And watch as this thing just churns around this storm here. And the showers keep marching toward the shoreline. Well, that's going to continue tomorrow. And, of course, the surf warnings and advisories are up for the East Coast again tomorrow. So 
Just consider it's going to be breezy, it's going to be overcast, and look at this clump, this lump of cloudiness right on top of this. It just keeps pouring in from the Atlantic. It's finding a lot of moisture out around the Gulf Stream. It's also finding some warmer temperatures, so it's taking that moisture, pushing it over us in the form of cloudiness. And there is a chance that there might be some fog in the morning, although we do have a breeze out there which might help break it up a bit. Be aware, fro it, is, it is frog season, and it is fog season also. Here's the monster that everybody's watching, this monster here coming out of Montana, where, by the way, last night, 25 degrees below zero. This cold air is pushing into Minnesota and parts of the Dakotas. There it's dropping a lot of snow, but eventually taking aim for the Great Lakes. And a little cold front that trails out of it, that's going to be our Saturday weather. But in the meantime, this right here, watch you see it turn around right there. That's the storm that's been causing the cloudiness for today. It's going to actually reach up and grab some cooler air and bring it right down on top of us. Here's kind of a summary of what's going on for tomorrow. As you can see the snow up in the Dakotas, rain along the mid-Mississippi Valley all the way down into Texas. And just a reminder, I don't have any idea who put that into the show. Probably me. Uh, here's the national map, 86 in Texas, 25 below. Now, this storm here, very slow moving. See this little cold front right here? Watch what happens to that cold front by tomorrow. That one's going to kind of trip down into Florida and become into the state of Florida by way of the back door. And so that looks like it just might give us a chance for some more cloudiness for Friday. And here comes Saturday's weather. It doesn't look good. Let me show you what the temperature ranges are right now around the state. In the 60s, a 70 being reported, though, around Melbourne. Here's a look at the on-the-coast forecast. You don't want a boat in this. Here's the forecast. Clouds and sun with a high tomorrow of 79. I don't think so. <laughs> I think that's a little optimistic. I think maybe 72 might be better. And the chance of rain around 60%. The five-day forecast says that we expect uh, temperatures to stay well, about normal until we get to the weekend. Then I think we're going to get a touch of Florida chill. Florida chill. Yes, sir. Okay. Thanks a lot, Dan. Okay. Most of us will share our Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow with family and friends, and this family at Bush Gardens is no exception. Lily the Two-Ton Hippo shares her dinner daily with an ostrich pal in a most unusual way. Lily opens her mouth, as you can see, wide enough to allow the ostrich to eat out of her mouth. When she's shared enough, Lily slowly closes her mouth and <laughs> goes about her day. She's just waiting till the ostrich gets right. in a little and too then, deep. That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Still to come, you've seen those tests with the famous car crash dummies. Well, in Germany, similar tests are being conducted with human bodies. We'll have details. And up next, a 20-year construction project in an underwater tunnel is halted when disaster strikes. We'll have the story. But first, here's how Wall Street wound up the work week. locked him in the trunk of his own car and drove around all day, where the 130-degree heat filled his lungs and seared his brain. Afterwards, they left him in a parking lot to die. Then, a miracle happened. 16-year-old Philip Chandler survived. I'm Channel 9's health reporter, Barbara West. It's one of the most frightening, inspiring, and incredible stories you'll ever experience, and a Thanksgiving you'll never forget. Philip Chandler's Miracle, an Eyewitness News special Thursday at 9 p.m. on Channel 9. Come to SeaWorld and experience the world, the peril, the hope of a living, breathing link to a prehistoric world. Manatees, the last generation, only at SeaWorld. It overpowered the Infinity J-30. It outtalked the Nissan 300ZX. But more importantly, it eliminated, annihilated, and utterly destroyed the Chrysler stereotype. The Concorde, an eloquent expression of form following function at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Nobody does it like you, the way that you do. Nobody's got the power to please me. Nobody does it like you, puts it all together. Spellbound perfume from Estee Lauder. Now choose any Estee Lauder fragrance and receive this 33-piece collection. 
including an interchangeable compact disc eyeshadow case. The coloring box, worth $150, is yours for $32.50. Estee Lauder's special holiday offer is yours at Dillard's. something popping up at Cypress Gardens. Here's some news from around the nation tonight. In New York City, a rescue team is draining a water tunnel to recover the body of a construction worker. He was killed this morning when a 16-ton winch fell into the tunnel where some men were working. Seven others were injured. Officials say his death brings to 20 the number of workers killed on this project since it began in 1970. In New Hampshire tonight, two workers are dead, a third is injured following the collapse of a temporary bridge near Concord. Investigators say it fell onto the workers who were underneath. The bridge was not in use at the time and no cars were involved. A gruesome way to crash test cars in Germany is coming under fire. It's been learned that since 1975, researchers at Heidelberg University have used cadavers in more than 200 automobile crash tests. Some of the bodies were those of children. The U.S. government reportedly funded some of those crashes. U.S. officials say the work is vital for improving car safety. For the first time since his death, the family of River Phoenix is speaking out. His mother paints a very different picture than the talk of him. Heart Phoenix says her son was not a regular drug user and usually lived a quiet life in the family's home near Gainesville. She says the party scene on Halloween was way beyond his control. River Phoenix died of an overdose of cocaine and heroin. Now, will tomorrow's weather be one you can uh, be some you can brag about to your relatives up north? I don't know. Danny Trainer unveils his 24-hour <laughs> forecast straight ahead. But next in sports, a lot of pre-Turkey Day hoops highlighted by UCF's final preseason tune-up. Pat has highlights when we come back. We don't build the cars and trucks that we sell, but we back them like we do, with a money-back guarantee only at the Courtesy Auto Group. We promise you a perfect car at a perfect price or your money back. That's our commitment. That's our courtesy. Courtesy Pontiac and Saturn of Orlando in Longwood. Courtesy Acura and Saturn of Orlando South by Florida Mall. We don't want you driving a car you don't like. When the sun goes up this weekend, you can be a big part of making life better for some special neighbors. During our holiday savings time this Friday from 7 to 10 a.m., Walmart will donate a portion of what you spend with us to a charity in your hometown. Start your holiday with holiday savings time this weekend at Walmart. You'll enjoy special savings and help your hometown in special ways. You gotta risk more to get more. That was my approach to investing. Banks? Well, they were a good place for your savings, but I didn't believe that any bank could give me the kind of returns that I expected from my investments. What I didn't know is that Sunbank isn't just any bank. All over Florida, people are making the switch to Sunbank for trust services because of our nationally recognized investment performance. Numbers. Their numbers made a believer out of me. Kids are stars at Universal Studios. Cause now through December 19th, kids are free. Free to face the smash and crashin', all new, all out attack of Jaws. Take a licking from the slobbering new superstar of the animal actor stage, Beethoven. Maybe get green slime. And scream through time, kids are free to fly, ride, play, and jam. But hurry, this great offer ends December 19th at Universal Studios where <laughs> Promise, Michael. 11:30 p.m. No ifs, ands, or buts. We're uh, we're talking trust here. Mm-hmm. And trust. Trust is golden. Golden. And honey, just because the car comes with dual airbags doesn't mean you fly down the road at a million miles an hour. <laughs> right. So. Uh, so, uh, what do you think? Sure, but maybe you guys should think about leasing your own. Bye, sweetie. Bye. The Integra Performance Lease, available exclusively at your local Acura dealer. 
Hi, folks. Things are hopping out in the UCF Athletic Department these days. The football team is prepping for a 1AA playoff game this weekend, and the men's basketball team is prepping for what new head coach Kirk Spiraw hopes will be a good first season. Final warm-up tonight for the Knights, who open the regular season next Tuesday against Rollins. Tonight, the same Brazilian club that lost badly to Stetson two nights ago was at the arena. Brazil raced out to a big lead in this one. It was 13-2 at one point, thanks to a nice plays like that one. But Coach Spira rallied the men and rounded up the troops. Ted Porti coming up here with an iffy three-pointer. He had 19 on the night. The Knights pulled to within three at halftime, but uh, Brazil pulled away in the second half and won this thing tonight by 15 points. Meanwhile, tonight they were playing for real up in New York, the site of the preseason NIT. Four ranked teams duking it out in the semifinals this evening, including the defending national champ, North Carolina, which is favored by everyone to repeat this season. Heels against number 18, UMass. Four of five starters for the Heels return. One is that guy, Eric Montross, who slams it home in the first. This game was tied throughout. Montross fouled out with just less than seven minutes to go. It has been tied, and with just seconds left in the game, we can tell you that uh, UMass is now trailing. Actually, now it is tied very late in the game, tied at 76. So it'll be an interesting finish to that one. Earlier tonight, Kansas a winner over Minnesota. The final score in that one was 75 to 71. Orlando Magic have the night off tonight. In fact, are one of few teams in the NBA not playing. Golden State, which lost here to the good guys last night, was down in Miami this evening, where lately the Heat have not been so hot. Miami trying to end a four-game losing skid in South Florida, and Golden State trying to regain some respect. That's Steve Smith driving the baseline for the pretty layup, 25-24 Golden State. Then it's Mr. Weber's turn to show the Miami folks his stuff with the alley-oop slam from Avery Johnson. That would be just the beginning as the Warriors take out their frustrations on the heat. The final score tonight was 108-102. Meanwhile, in Utah, the Houston Rockets tried to extend their win streak to 11 against the Jazz. Rockets have yet to be beaten this year, and they have reason to be cocky. Robert Horry with the slam and the little head wag after that. Then off the turnover, it's Horry again, slamming it home one more time. Rockets led by seven points after three periods. Utah tied it. They went to overtime and then, believe it, Houston wins again by two points. The final score was 95 to 93. Charlotte wins at home over the Lakers tonight. Cleveland also a winner at home. Boston wins on the road in Detroit. Philly 108, Indiana 97. Atlanta wins at Milwaukee tonight. Minnesota at home over Jersey by one point. San Antonio was a winner and Phoenix club Denver tonight 130 to 97. As Florida State prepares for the big game Saturday afternoon against the Gators, the fellows from Tallahassee are trying not to think about the mystique of Florida Field, affectionately dubbed the Swamp. No one has beaten the Gators on their home turf since 1989, 23 consecutive victories. And if you think that the Knowles aren't concerned about the Swamp, think again. Stadium, loud, fans throwing pennies at you. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, it's... Ooh, it's, it's wild down there. Now, this should be a spectator's ball game. It wouldn't surprise me now for this to be a ball game where one team gets two touchdowns ahead, the other one comes back and ties it up and goes ahead, and then this one, I mean, and I'm, I mean it, it, it could be one. If you get two ahead, it don't mean anything. Clemson University looking for a new head football coach tonight. Ken Hatfield, who had three years remaining on his current contract, resigned today despite an 8-3 record this season and a sure thing bowl bid. Quickly, the hockey scores tonight. Tampa wins at home over Hartford. Pittsburgh over Boston. Jersey wins at Buffalo. The Rangers 7, Ottawa 1. Philadelphia 9, Montreal 2. Washington defeated St. Louis 5-2. The Islanders are Dallas tied at 2 in the third period. Actually, that is in overtime now. And uh, Anna Anaheim has beaten Winnipeg 2-1 was the final in that one. That's it. See you tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Pat. Now, how does it look for Thanksgiving Day? Well, here's Danny Trainer once again with the 24-hour forecast. Danny? The bright spot tomorrow might be the turkey. Yeah. <laughs> it <sounds laughs> looks like way. it's going to be a little on the cloudy side. There might be some drizzles and showers also in the forecast. Won't be the kind of day you want to grill your turkey out outdoors. No. No, 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 no. Okay. Thanks a lot, Danny. Have a happy Thanksgiving. You too. That's our news for now. Thank you all for joining us. As you gear up for a big weekend tomorrow morning, don't forget to tune in to Eyewitness News Daybreak starting at 6 a.m. For all of us at Eyewitness News, have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Good night. Good night.